Metal ceiling tins were all the rage in Victorian times, and they were used on the ceiling in pharmacies and hotels and even homes. Many of them were torn down and destroyed, but some of them, like these, were rescued and reused. This has been repainted. You can see it's painted in a dark charcoal color on the background, and it's highlighted with a glaze over the top so you can see all the detail work. But it's important to look on the back. What was added was a frame just to give it stability and also to keep from the metal edges from, you know, cutting your fingers. So now you can add the magnets to it, but what was once on the ceiling of a pharmacy can now be a message board for your whole family to use. You know, it just dawned on me, those uh, tins are great to use, especially now that refrigerators, well, they're made of wood and glass and you no longer can put all of your pictures on them. So that's a great idea and a tip for you. Well, we always like to give you good advice and my good friend, Justin Higginbotham is here from Designer Floors and I kind of call him my resident home on homes. I don't know if you've ever seen that show, but Justin does that for us. He always talks, about, see, I love all the beautiful and uh, beautiful tiles, but he breaks it down to what is behind it because he wants it to last. Hey, Justin, we're so glad that you're back on the show. I love your enthusiasm. When you start talking about underlayment and what's behind the tile, you just get so excited. So tell me about your business and where you guys are located, your great showroom. Well, thank you for having me back, Denise. We are located at 8200 Highway 100 in the Bellevue area. Uh -huh. Our website is designerfloorsnashville.com and the phone number is 615-646-2292. We are a one-stop yeah. shop and we literally do it all. So all types of flooring as well as cabinets, countertops, custom window treatments. We really do it all and work very hard to make sure the customer is very happy with the end result. And you know, one of the things that you do is you actually do some of the remodeling jobs mm -hmm. yourself. And so we're gonna show some of the products that you carry. I just used one of your cabinet guys out at your, and mm -hmm. I was very happy with the products that he had. And what I like about the showroom is you can go out and you can look at all the flooring that they have and all of the backsplashes and the cabinets. They have a great showroom. So. Tell me about um, some of the backsplashes. Well, as for backsplashes, really the sky's the limit, as with pretty much any type of tile that's out there. So whatever look you want to accomplish, we can help you achieve that. Now, one of the things that you say, and it's a little bit shocking, I will have to say, that you say is be bold and when you're talking about resale value you know how uh, a lot of my clients will say well how's that going to be for resale value you really have a big twist on that what's your opinion well a lot of it goes back with what bonnie was talking about in the mm -hmm. first segment is be creative don't go in just trying to use beige colors everywhere and be very neutral and just have your house be very bland you know, add some color to it do what you like. I mean, you're the one ultimately paying for whatever work you're having done. So go with something that you're going to be happy with, that you're going to want to look at every day. And why do you think, I mean, people are so fearful of doing anything outside of the box. And do you think, I mean, they feel like they're just not going to get money for their home. But, I mean, how, how many people are just going to turn around and resell their home as well? Well, if it's a situation where you're going to be putting your house on the market within the next year or two, sure. then absolutely, you can take that into consideration. Right. But if you're going to be in your house for the next five or more years at least, then go with what you like. Absolutely. I Hey, I'm going to say yay for that. I think that you absolutely should. Well, we've got some pictures of the backsplashes, some of them that Justin did himself. Is this the herringbone one that you were telling me about? No, that's going to be a little bit later. Okay. Well, tell me about this. This is a tumbled stone backsplash and over the stove we did a glass accent. Um, with these individual pieces they actually come on a mesh sheet to make it a little bit easier on the installer so they're not I having to do every to one say. of those things individually. <laughs> but then we just trimmed it out with a liner bar to just really finish everything off. That's so pretty. And this is a continuation of that same kitchen with the tumbled stone going 
under the rest of the cabinets as well as if you look closely there's actually little glass pieces that were inserted so every throughout. just kind of randomly correct okay mm -hmm. that looks good oh this is pretty this is another tumbled stone backsplash and the center of it is also made out of small tumble stone squares the same thing which on a mesh but those the center pieces there are roughly about a half inch by half inch and we trimmed it out with a liner bar and anytime you're dealing with stone you have the option of either sealing it or enhancing it if you enhance it then it gives it a little bit darker look almost as if the stone is just constantly wet okay so it gives it a little bit more sheen and, and let's uh, you've got a tip right here um, something that I was a little bit surprised by when you said it because I always think of always make sure that you seal the wet areas we know to seal all of the grout but you said something to me and I thought it was a great idea you said it's better to I mean you really need to concentrate on sealing the stove area tell me about absolutely. that absolutely you want to seal the backsplash but certainly the most important component to that okay. is sealing behind the stove where you're going to be cooking. If you have white tile, white grout, and you're cooking spaghetti sauce, then mm. you're asking for trouble if you don't have that properly sealed. Otherwise, the grout's going to get stained, and it's very difficult to clean. Usually, wow. you end up having to cut out the grout and replace the grout to get rid of the staining. That is good advice and something that I you know I I had thought about the wet areas of course but behind the stove good tips always from Justin we've got some more pictures as well this is a another backsplash we recently did the tiles here are glass tiles and anytime that you're incorporating glass into a backsplash it's really giving it a little bit more modern look and again kind of going back to what Bonnie was talking about earlier you can see the white cabinets there yeah, we're going back to the white cabinets. But with this pop and that backsplash, they are being bold. Mm -hmm. They're not just taking it easy. Now, I've got to point out something that I'm seeing here. Are these outlets that are covered around the outlets? The outlet covers are made of metal, but certainly any time that you're dealing with tumbled stone in particular, you can get outlet covers to, they're made of plastic, but they mimic that look of That's the tumbled stone. That's a great stone. idea. So they blend in a whole lot better rather than just having those very plain white outlet covers. Right, and this is a bar look. This, uh, this really gives you more of a contemporary feel, more of a modern feel. And what is that countertop? The countertop's actually made out of tile. Uh, that was one that we showed on one of the previous episodes. But with this backsplash here, it's incorporating slate as well as glass, and it really just gives a lot of depth and texture. Mm -hmm. I like that. And um, we're seeing a full kitchen here. Correct. This one here is the backsplash is marble. And again, anytime you're dealing with a natural stone product, you really want to make sure that you use the correct sealers. Um, just to protect it and give it the the life that you want to. Exactly. Anytime that you're dealing with natural stones, especially stones that are porous, you have to worry about the stone staining as well as the grout. Now, is this one that was enhanced, or if this, or was it sealed with just a? Uh... That one there we just sealed. Oh, okay. This is what you were talking about earlier, the herringbone pattern. Oh, this is pretty. Now you mm -hmm. installed this yourself. This is one that I personally did. Uh huh. One of the new trends that are really coming back, a lot of interior designers are really getting back to subway tiles. Mm -hmm. And again, you're going with a white, a very clean look. And anytime that we can incorporate a pattern to that, just really accents the kitchen very well. I love that. And we've got a, oh, and here's another backsplash. This is the same kitchen as earlier with the, with the glass tiles there. Mm -hmm. And it really just gives it a very nice look. Nice. And a, oh, this is a beautiful floor. Again, a lot of people are wanting to do something different in the kitchen rather than hardwood. Mm -hmm. With this particular house, the homeowner was wanting something really different. So we looked around and we were able to find this black metal tile. And it really, really just made the kitchen pop. 
Once this is a black metal. I love that. Mm -hmm. That is so pretty. Well, Justin, I want to talk to you about something that, you know, in my kitchen, um, I have, I do have wood floors. It's an old house, and I noticed after one of our parties, somebody had one of their heels maybe was a little sharp, and there were little ping marks. Now. I don't mind because I want our house to be well worn, but you've got a remedy for this. Let's talk about what kind of wood floors is no maintenance? Anytime that you're adding heels to wood, just the amount of pressure that you're putting that's concentrated on that heel can very easily dent hardwood flooring. Right. Well, if you still want that hardwood look, which everybody loves. Right. There's certainly other options out there, one of which is tile that has a wood look to it, which is what we have here. Well, let's here. show that. And you were just telling me about a situation that you had in a bathroom that didn't turn out so well. It was a wood floor. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Anytime that you have water and wood in water the same area. Water and wood just then doesn't work. It doesn't go well. Yeah. So it creates a lot of maintenance nightmares anytime that you have leaky plumbing, mm -hmm. especially in kitchens, we're always getting phone calls for water lines that are coming loose on refrigerators or plumbing leaks that are underneath the sink. Right. Depending on what type of hardwood flooring you have and how old the floor is, mm -hmm. that can turn into a very extensive, very costly repair because a lot of times we have to go in and completely redo everything. Wow. And even pull up the underlayment and everything. Correct. And if it's a, it's a, if it's a really slow leak that you don't catch in time, then it can do a lot of damage to the subfloor itself and by the time you actually get around to noticing it and trying to address the problem. It is too late, but you have something right here that mm -hmm. is the answer to the solution. Now, it's hard to believe, but look at this. Tilt it forward just a, a little bit, yeah. It's hard to believe, but now are you telling me this is not a wood plank? It's a porcelain tile that, as you can see, is very textured and really, really mimics the look of hardwood flooring. Oh my goodness, I mean that is amazing. And what is this uh, product called? So this is a ceramic plank. Does it come in different colors as well? It does come in multiple colors. For this particular one, there are four different colors, but a lot of the different tile manufacturers on the market are making wood look tiles because that is certainly a trend that is gaining ground. Mm -hmm. I love that. And if we, you know, if you use this in a kitchen area, say mm -hmm. that you want to take out um, your wood floors, how would you do that? Like, would you just, would you have to do, put in a new subfloor in order to lay this, or would you lay it over? No, we would use the exact existing? same subfloor that you have underneath your hardwood flooring. So you would take the hardwoods out, and Correct. then you would lay this. Correct. So, yeah. And with the products that we use for all of our tile installations mm -hmm. using the Schluter Ditra as the underlayment and then any place where you're going to have a seam using their waterproofing membrane Curdy then and also pulling off the baseboards and flashing the Curdy behind the baseboards along the walls we can waterproof the floor. Literally waterproof the floor. Correct. I mean would you ever recommend, like if it was out by a pool, could you spray this off? I mean, would you recommend this out near, like in a pool house? Any place that you're going to have, that you're worried about water, then absolutely it's a good idea. Because yes, it's gonna be a little bit more money up front just for the added labor and materials, but it can really save you a lot of time and headache as well as money down the road if you ever have a repair situation. Now, just say, for example, that someone's watching us and they say, but I love the pretty wood floors and the wood tones. Can you get this in the wood tones in, in different colors, like the mahoganies There's and things like that? There's not as many colors available yet. Okay, it's just coming it out time. on the market. Give it time. There will be more colors coming available. Wow. It's that, always one of those things, if the demand is there, the manufacturers are going are gonna to catch up. 
Wow, I love that product. And, and of course, everybody can go out to designer floors. You can have the opportunity to look at uh, the samples uh, that Justin has. And what I like about Justin is he'll come out to your house. I sent him out to one of my client's houses and uh, he's been talking to them about their wood floors and maybe uh, replacing all of those. So that's what I like about you, Justin. You know what to do behind the scenes to make all that work. And we're gonna be giving all of your contact information coming up. Thank you for all those great tips. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, hey, I want to tell you about a product. I was at a couple's house for dinner and they took us up in their attic. That's an unusual thing to do, but they took us up in their attic and they were so excited because they had just had this uh, product called Foamworks sprayed in their attic. And I will tell you, it was 30 degrees outside and it was not cold in that attic. This is Foamworks. You can get in touch with them at 59075. Five, I'm sorry, seven, eight, five, six. You can contact them. Hey, Josh, it's there. It's Josh and Christina, and they are such nice couple. It's a family-owned business, and that's what I like about them. So you can contact them. Hey, don't don't miss out because we have our party favors that we're going to give you when we come back. This is a storm.